to today's live stream. I'm Dr. Derek Wright from Houghton Horns, and today we're going to be talking about the Finca Westphalia. So I wanted to talk about this horn today because of some of its unique properties. The most important and most prominent is its valves. The Finca Westphalia and most Finca horns have what's called composite rotors. So instead of being made of metal like a normal rotor, this is a normal rotor which is made of brass. Then this particular one has been nickel plated. The Finca rotors are made of a composite material. Which I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty sure it's just a fancy way of saying plastic because it feels like plastic, but it's officially a composite material, not plastic. Um, either way, what this does is this valve is much, much lighter than this valve. And if you've ever had the chance, I know most of you haven't, to lift the valve section from a French horn, you'll know that the valve section is the heaviest part of the horn. So if you can significantly reduce the weight of the valve section, you significantly reduce the weight of the horn. Imagine the weight savings between these two valves times four for your average double horn, and you see what I'm talking about. So not only does the lighter valve um, just make the horn lighter and easier to hold, it also makes the action of turning the valves much better. Because when you turn, you can, I, you can even see a little bit here. If I turn this valve pretty quickly, there's a little wobble, but it's really easy to turn. This valve has so much more mass, it wobbles a lot more and it's a lot harder to turn. What that means practically is that the valve action on Finca horns is very quick and very light just because you're turning less mass back and forth. Uh, the other thing is that um, a lighter horn tends to be more responsive. So not only lighter the hold, but easier to start notes on, it will, notes will start up right away. They, I titled this live stream, the most innovative horn. And that's because I believe it, this is like it or not. I have not seen any other manufacturers who are doing something as radical as, you know, having a non-traditional non-metal valve. And I know some people shy away from Finca because of that, because it's different and they're not, they're not used to the idea. And I do know that the, their first few iterations of the composite valve just had some issues. Like I know there was a version that you only lubricate it with water, but if you lubricated it with oil, it would swell up and seize up the valve section. The new valves don't have that problem. You can, you can and you're encouraged to um, oil them with regular valve oil and they work just fine. Um, but, but yeah, using a non-metal valve is truly a great risk because I don't know if you've noticed, but horn players really like tradition. And most wind instrument players do in general. There could be something different, but not but something radically different is not necessarily readily accepted or quickly accepted. But I can tell you that this horn plays really, really well. In fact, when I still taught a lot of high school students, this was the first horn that I would recommend to them. Because the other thing that's innovative about this horn is the price. This particular model is put together in such a way, it's still a German handmade horn, but it's put together in such a way that the cost can be reduced from the normal nine to $12,000 range that German handmade horns usually occupy. 
This horn is $6,595, so basically $6,600. That's a, on the high end for a student horn, but still competitive. Uh, it's right around the price of a Hans Hoyer G10. It's a little cheaper than a Yamaha 871. Um, it's about the same price as a Hans Hoyer 6802. So there are lots of um, higher end, um, there are lots of, you know, higher end affordable level horns in the range of this horn. So yeah, I, I a lot of my students bought this horn because because of the high quality of construction, the lightness, and just the way it plays. Uh, this horn also gets a very, very pleasant sound. Let me play a little bit for you. So this horn has a nice broad sound. It's not quite as narrow as a lot of other yellow brass guyer horns. And that's because the bell taper of this horn is clearly medium large. So it's larger than horns like um, it's larger than horns like the LDX5 or Rico Kuhn or most original guyers. Yeah. But it's not, you know, it's not as large as you know, a nickel silver crisp style horn like the Kine 8D or the Holton 179. So it fits a nice middle point. Definitely more towards the Geyer side than the crisp side, but nice round sound, easy to play, uh, not harsh at all. Um, yeah, just generally a very pleasant horn. You know, I realize I'm not looking at any chats here. Let me actually bring them up. And today we're going to be talking only a very in mute, <laughs> just in case anyone wants to say anything. Yes, once again, this is a an impromptu um, live stream. It's preparing for lots of auditions. I've got lots of things going on right now, so a little harder to a um, little harder to plan these things right now than that I would normally like. Taking a look here. I'll mute that. Okay. Great, now I can see all your chats. So if you have any questions about vowels or um, horns in general or how even the Finca Westphalia might stack up against some other horns, just let me know and I'm happy to give, um, give my opinion. Uh, let me play a little bit more and then um, I'll talk a little bit more about this horn. see some chats have caught me side of, um, off the side here. This is the Finca Westphalia. So um, Finca, a company owned by Johannes Finca, they make horns in a small workshop in Vloto, Germany with about um, four to five employees. So 
in my classification of horn makers, my own personal classification of horn makers, it's not the like one guy making a horn, um, like Madeline or Rauch or Berg or anything like that. But it's not a factory horn either, you know, um, like Kanzo or Yamaha. So this is a small workshop horn where the instruments are still being handmade. Um, so the valves are made of plastic. They're officially, the valves are officially made of a composite material. Um, yeah, I don't know if the beginning of the stream didn't actually hit, um, hit YouTube and Facebook, but just to go over it again, um, this is a normal valve, which is made of brass and then nickel plated. And this is well, the rotor made of uh, the composite material, which to me feels like plastic, but it's not officially called plastic. It's called a composite material. I don't know if that's a fancy way of saying plastic or not, but I'm just going to go with the official designation. Um, Some other things about this horn that I like. Uh, the lead pipe is made of nickel silver. So you have some brands of horns that you always have, generally have a nickel silver pipe. Like if you've seen a Berg, those usually have nickel silver pipes. Lewis's generally have nickel silver pipes. Engelbert Schmidt's standard models have nickel silver pipes. But you don't see it often because nickel silver pipes can actually be hard to make. The metal is harder than yellow brass and gold brass. Um, so there's a higher failure rate when um, drawing the pipe and bending it. It's more likely to crack, more likely to have, more likely, more likely to have failures. Um, but the advantage of nickel silver is that it doesn't corrode. If you look at an old Geyer or an old C of Schmidt, so those pipes were all made of yellow brass. And the odds of you finding one of those horns with an original pipe these days is very, very, very low. And it's not because people wanted to just customize the horns, though some of them did. Generally what happened is the pipe got red rot and disintegrated. It's just something that's going to eventually happen because your acidic, um, your acidic saliva and uh, such is always hitting the pipe all the time, especially if the horn is uh, used often. So a yellow brass pipe will just disintegrate, though there are some tonal um, advantages to having um, yellow brass. Now gold brass does not corrode, and you see those in a lot of horns um, as well. Uh, such as Kuhn standard models tend to be um, gold brass, Hoyer's Hans Hoyer's pipes tend to be gold brass, a few others. Um, but I tend to like nickel silver over gold brass because nickel silver adds a little extra life and ping to the sound than the gold brass. But that's just my opinion. You might find a gold brass pipe works better for you. Um, but yeah, Finca uses his own proprietary ring which is a little larger than the standard Alex ring, but because he uses a, his proprietary ring, um, you can't go by like a, a Sandner bell with a standard Alex ring and plan on, on swapping anything. Finca also uses a removable leak pipe receiver. Let me see if I can get this off. You know what? Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get this off without something to grab onto it. So you're just going to have to believe me. This uh, receiver here screws off of this horn and you can replace it with um, a Euroshank receiver. So when you're buying a Finca horn, you don't necessarily need to order a European shank or Morse shank. Um, if you want to use a European um, mouthpiece with it, you just use the European receiver, put it on, and then you can put your Alexander mouthpiece or your Joseph Clear mouthpiece. Um, and then uh, if you want to use a standard Morse, well, standard to Americans, then you take it off and you use the Morse receiver. Um, some other uh, German makers are also using uh, removable receivers. Uh, Dirk 
uses it on his um, LDX-5 and most of his other Dirk branded horns. Um, it's also used by Otto. Yeah, let me play a little bit more. Let me have the YouTube chat. Let me check. Okay, so we have a few things in uh, YouTube chat here. Could you comment on the rap? How it compares to a Gaia rap? Yes. Good eye. This is this is a Geyer ish rap. So this is this is we, in the store we call this a Geyer rap because it's it takes a lot longer to explain the difference. But no, it's not. You can tell a few ways you can tell. This uh, F branch here on a standard Geyer will come all the way up and around this. On, on this horn you can see it cuts short and it ends up and it ends up being a little shorter here. Also this horn does a double loop Let me see. in the F branch here. So here you can see the F branch that comes down Make sure I'm finding the loop here. Okay. So the F branch kind of does this U shape and then it goes down and then it comes back up. On a standard Geyer style horn, the wrap is much simpler back there. So this is a standard Geyer style horn. This is my Matlin compared to the Finca which just has more loops back there. Now, part of the reason why it's done like that is back to that cost savings that I was talking about before. It's actually, even though this looks more complicated, it's actually easier to assemble the horn with all of those used there because the bins end up being less complex. So bins that have to turn and then actually, if it has to like turn and dip at the same time, those kind of bins are harder to bend than a pipe that just bends like that. Uh, I hope if, if anyone doesn't understand what I'm saying, um, uh, let me know, but I'll just repeat that. Bins, simple bins, are easier to make than complex bins when you have to bend and then change direction at the same time. A standard Geyer style horn has more of those quote 3D bins than this horn, which has more simple bins. Now, how does that change the playing experience? It's really impossible to tell. I'd have to see this horn with these tapers bent exactly into a Geyer style horn, which comes close with the Finca Legacy. The Finca Legacy actually uses the same uh, bell tail and um, bell as this horn, but I don't know if it uses the same mouth pipe or the same, um, same first branch tapers. But the, the Finca Legacy is a a standard Geyer wrap horn, and that's more around the $9,000 price point. And the complexity of those bins are the main reason behind the difference in price. Basically, you know, brass and all the raw materials for a horn are not that expensive. What you're paying for is the time. And generally, if you're paying less, it took less time to make it. If you're comparing two horns that were made in the same market with the same labor costs, um, if you're paying a difference in price, you're paying a difference in time to make the horn. Um, well, that was a tangent. And I hope, um, uh, I hope I answered that uh, question. Could you discuss valve oils and slide grease? I've had issues on three different horns where Hetman oils dissolving the slide grease into the valve cluster. So generally when we find, um, 
generally we find that when that happens, you're using too much slide grease. Uh, when I was young, I, I had this problem all the time because I would take, let me see if I have any slide grease within reach. Let me get some slide grease out. I would take slide gel and run it all up and down my, the legs of the of the um, of the uh, of the slide. But really, we apply with a paintbrush in the shop. But all you need is a light ring around the top. Just a light ring of oil around the top. So I don't know if the camera will focus in on this. We'll give it a try. That's all the grease I need for that slide. And when I'm using that little grease, it's going to lubricate the slide, but there's not going to be enough left to actually wash down into, into the horn itself. Now, I don't know how much, I don't know how much um, slide grease you're using, but we just find that that's generally that's generally what happens when people complain about slide grease being washed down into their horns. They're just using too much of it. You only need to use a tiny bit. Okay. Um, hello from Thailand. Well, hello back to you from Texas. Check Facebook again. Okay, well, thank you very much for the questions. If I didn't answer anything clearly enough, feel free to let me know and I'll try again uh, to be a little bit clearer. But this is the Finca Westphalia. If another company is, if another company is seriously making horns with, uh, with something this different and are taking these kind of risks, please let me know. But, uh, most companies like to say they're innovative, but frankly, I don't see too many innovative things out of them. But that the vowels on the Finca horn are truly, truly innovative. I'll play it just a little bit more because I don't think I've, I've played lyrical. I, play, I haven't played anything um, loud on it yet. So I'll play something a little loud, um, check to make sure no one else has any questions in chat, and then we'll move on. So that's the Finca Westphalia. Great sounding, fairly affordable horn. Lightweight, easy valves, well built. If you're looking at a horn in that price range, it should be on your short list. I will see everyone again next week. Thank you. Bye.